Well, you know, you certainly will have a chance to testify if you just need to testify. If you don't object, just because you don't agree with it, okay? If you got a legal objection, that's more than there's, there's, no, there's no proof for it. Absolutely no proof. I'm the only one with images of uh, things thrown at me. Well, I'm going to let her testify, mm -hmm. okay? Of course, let her push to the fact that you will have a chance to cross examine her, then you'll have a chance to testify, okay? Just because you disagree with her testimony doesn't constitute a legal objection. Um, when did the relationship start? Um, about, we did it for about a year. So tell me when you started the um, Approximately, let's see, maybe September uh, 2000. Yeah, it was, it was a year and a half though. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what did, what did there come a point in time? Yes. So it progressively got worse. Um, in November, I suggested to Scott that he needs to use, um, mental health. I suggested that he go. November is that? 2015. I'm sorry. Yes. I suggested a psychiatrist because I said we're not making any progress. We're not moving forward. I said, I don't know what else to do. You feel like you're doing everything, you know, right that you know how to do. I feel the same way. So I suggested the only thing I could think of was, you know, couples therapy. It's the only thing I could think of. Um, I suggested that, you know, I told him I really cared about him. I was seeing some patterns of behavior that were um, threatening, that were controlling, obsessive, um, but very kind. I said, I care very much about you. I kindly suggested that he seek medical help. He then went and told me that he was seeing a mental health professional. I asked him who it was and he sent me um, who it was and I noticed that it was not um, a life, it wasn't a psychiatrist. So I suggested that he go see a psychiatrist, you know, out of friendship, I suggested this. And he promises that he will go see a psychiatrist he sent me the receipt of the mental health professional that he was seeing. Um, I told him that I didn't want, um, shortly after this, I told him I didn't trust him. I wanted to take a break. I didn't want um, to contact each other and that I would contact him when and if I was ready. Um, and he was, he was good about it during that time. He, he did send me a few texts despite the fact that I asked him not to. Um, he sent me a picture of his mom who um, is deceased during that amount of time. She's an identical twin. He's, it's like he's, to me, has developed an obsession with twins. Um, but anyway, during that period of time, he was okay. He, he, he didn't contact me too much. Um, and then eventually, um, I woke up one morning to, I don't know, 10 calls. Um, you know, that was uh, December 14th, 2015. Um, he sent me early in the morning, you know, a bunch of calls. He sent me text messages saying, you know, as if, we, as if I had never told him, please don't contact me. I want you to get some mental help. And in the meantime, don't contact me. It was as, as if we'd never had that conversation. Um, he's, you know, why are you not calling me? You're the worst girlfriend in the world. Um, I bet you're cheating on me. You're contacting other men instead of me. Um, and I told him at that point, again, very kindly, I care very much about you. Um, I, I hope you get some help. 
I wish you well. I do not want you to contact me anymore. We are no longer dating. I do not want a relationship of any kind with you. Do not contact me through any medium. Do not email me. Do not Facebook me. Do not call me. Was that in an email? That was through a text, and I also Facebooked him. And um, um, I'll get to why I don't have that, but I can have that very quickly if you need it. Um, shortly after this. So was that on or the 14th? It was on the 14th, okay. yes. As soon as I did that, um, I blocked him from Facebook. Within moments, he had texted and emailed my, uh, pretty much my entire family, vulgar messages about me. Um, he continued to text me throughout that entire day, obsessively, constantly, every minute. Um, you are going to contact me. We are not breaking up. You know, um, you know I'm going to tell everyone bad things about you. How many texts you um, That day, I would say probably my phone sitting over in Captain Greiser's uh, storage tin can because Scott hacked into it. So I can go get it if you need it, but I'm going to have to guess here. Um, I would say maybe. Objection. I did not hack into the phone. That's a, a blatant lie. That is a blatant well, lie. Um, I would guess maybe um, 35. So um, because the, um, well, he then um, called me obsessively, called me, um, and I can show you proof of that, um, gosh, I don't know, maybe 30 times in a row. Um, and so I got a new phone number. I had to go get a new number. Um, this is December 28, 2015. Um, 10 times here. Um, all of these. Just so over and over. The these are. These are. Um, And so, um, did you actually speak to him or just never? Mm -mm, I did not pick up. I have not contacted Scott um, since December 14th when I told him, Do not contact me. The last words I wrote were, Goodbye, Scott. I have not contacted him, attempted to contact him in any way. Um, um, so, um, I cut my phone. Um, he hacked. He hacked it. Well, I believe he hacked into my phone, um, and. So tell me what happened. Because yes. Um, so um, I took. Well, let's see. I took my phone to the Verizon store because um, my emails were being broken into my phone. Um, I couldn't turn off certain features, and he's very tech savvy. It's what he does for a living. And um, anyway. Um, Verizon told me, and I have a handwritten note from the person we also called Verizon Fraud, that um, it looks like someone had um, turned off the mobile network's feature so that they could hack in. Um, and how I know it was Scott was because um, he obsessively called my phone, like I just showed you, and um, one time he left a voicemail message from this number, um, and he said it was him. And I have that message, and so Which I. Number? I'm sorry. I think I did leave something out when he started call, calling me obsessively, writing disgusting vulgar messages to all my family. I'm sorry. We all blocked him, and that was on I think the 15th, December 15th, 2015. We all went to Verizon and blocked his number from our phone so that the constant calls and texts would stop. When we blocked his regular number, it was a 720 number. We, when we blocked him, he went and got a different phone so he could continue to contact us all. And ha that's the 303 number that I just showed you. And how we know it's him is because he left us um, a voicemail message. He left my mom a voicemail message saying it was him from this number. And I have that recording. What's that? That number is 303-731-5069. Yes, it was a message directed, you know, to me for our whole family, but it was on my mom's phone. And did you hear the message? Yes, I have it. Did it sound like his voice to you? Yes. All right, 
correct? So what happened after that? Well, um, in the message, he um, says you need to have Brittany call me. Um, I'm going to ruin Brittany and Brianna's lives. I'm coming for their jobs. Brianna filed a fake rape report against me. You know, I'm going to do. I'm coming after them. Basically, you better have Brittany call me. I can. I can play it. I have a couple from them. that he began calling my work. He called um, campus police and said that I stole his things. He I still have that box of yours. I've been meaning to send it for the past week, and I'm going to. called the front desk of um, the admissions office, which is, I'm a, a co-director in the admissions office. He called the receptionist a few times, spoke with her, you know. How do you know he called them? Um, I walked in when he called her. And he said, this is Scott Gutenberger, too. Well, he didn't right away. He said, it's Brittany there. Um, and she said, may I ask who's calling? And he said, I don't want to say. And, and um, Barbara said, well, I have to be able to give her the message. And Barbara Fouth is the name of our um, front desk receptionist. And then he said, OK, my name's Scott Gutenberger. And she said, can I have your number? And he said, she has my number. And you better tell her to call me. Well, then the next morning. Uh, when did he call campus police? Um, he called campus police December, I think, 15th, 2015. He's a He called my work again. He called my office. He left a voicemail message on my um, office phone. He left another voicemail message for Barbara saying this message is for Brittany. I actually have that one, too. I can play that one, too. He was calling everyone at my work. He is obsessed with Sweetbriar. He always said I gave Sweetbriar more I like the color choice that he chose today, pink and green. Um, I, he has been obsessively contacting people from Sweetbriar to have them give us messages from him. Um, but I can pray, play that other recording. Do you know how many different people in Sweetbriar? I have had, I think, um, 20 total contact me to um, tell me that, tell me, you know, his messages for him, including the president of Sweetbriar College. Um, including general counsel of Sweetbriar College, including my boss here, Stephen Mace, uh, chief of the admissions office. I have had countless alumni call me in my office and tell me that you know all, all the videos and photos and messages, disgusting messages that he's posting about me and my twin sister and our family. So, you know, 20, 30, 
more. Who directly said something. Had, who have directly called the thousands the of views all over the internet. Do you want me to play that other message or no? Is there any, I mean, what, tell me what's on it. Let's see, the one where he calls Barb, um, he says that um, Brittany needs to call me. I have been in touch with people from Sweetbriar who think that uh, Brittany and Brianna have provocative images. They agree with me. And we're going to remove the Dean twins. Um, uh, make sure you tell her that. If she doesn't call me, I'm going to um, release vid more videos and photos of her. He then went on and created a fake Twitter account, called it the Dean Twin, and posted pictures of me and Brianna with comments implying that we commit incest. Um, comments implying that is actually a different account. Eighteen accounts, one that I do own, that I was asked to set up by them, and never paid for the work across all social media. And then there's another one. Uh, if she's talking about the other one, the uh, parody of Dean Twins, I have nothing to do. Nothing to do with that. I don't have a Twitter account, so um, I can show you. It implies that we've committed incest. Um, um, so I guess I can tell. That's the purity account. No, nope. Dean Twins account. Um, posting pictures without my permission. And videos with my voice. Um, Well, here's the Twitter impersonation, and then I can show you emails where he admits that it's him posting the video. Um, this picture is of us that I don't never consented to put on the internet. We are two spoiled bitches who lie to get what we want. We act Mormon, but are far from it. Um, I have the consent. Uh, um, this is softcore porn. This is a picture, a modeling picture with a makeup bag. We're putting on makeup on each other and says that it's porn. This is a lesbian comment. People often wonder, ask us if we're lesbians. Can we press the retweets on that as well? Because those, either those pictures were posted by them when we were going through the setup, or those are from the parody account of someone else is posting that. Um, on January 14th, which is the day he was served with one of those preliminary brain orders, um, he told me it was him posting the videos under alias name. Um, he did the same thing on YouTube. He created a Dean Twins and he admits to that as well. Um, so he sent me this. The subject is Scott Gutenberger. It's from Jeff Medson, that's one of the alias he's been using to post recordings um, and videos and messages about us. He tells me it's him, and then he also, and, and that I need to call him, you better call me, and then he, in, he includes um, a Facebook message between himself and this other identical twin that he's obsessed that I'm, that I was cheating on him with, his doctor named Matt Heller.
to see that? spent, I don't know, countless, countless days um, contacting YouTube. We created a fake uh, Bean Twins YouTube channel. And um, it's, I believe, how he likes to, one of the ways he likes to keep contact, you know, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, constantly. So we have to spend time trying to get the videos and recordings of us down. Um, and then YouTube sends us, um, a couple times they agree that there was privacy violations and impersonation, so they put stuff down. But um, other times, you know, they send us a message when we write into YouTube saying, contact the person doing it. Um, you know, ev I mean, every day. Every single day, it has been something. Since December 14th, when I told him, I'm wishing you well, do not contact me again. Every single day, it has been something. I have not contacted him once. I just want nothing to do with him. I want the contact to stop, the obsession to stop. He's contacted everyone I know. You heard on the voicemail message, um, he threatens that he's gotten somehow all these contacts uh, of ours. Um, I think that's also proof that he has hacked in. Um, hacking, stalking, threatening. Um, I, I've been so scared that um, when this first started going on, our boss here, Steve Nave, Stephen Ape was getting um, messages from the head of media and marketing at Sweetbriar College, um, to name one, he's getting messages from lots of people. He actually paid for us to go stay in a hotel a few nights because we didn't want to stay at home. And then finally our dad was able to get there, so we didn't have to keep staying in a hotel. And our dad was staying with us every time. He also says in here, and I would like you to ask him how he knows this or why he believes this. In one of the messages where he posts videos and recordings of us, he said, um, Brittany and Brianna Dean are mad that sweet, that people at Sweetbriar are threatening their chance to buy a cottage on campus. And I would like to know how he knows that or why he believes that. Can we please ask him who he, told him that? Well, if you told him that, you have a chance to ask him. Okay. Yeah, so he knows, um, you know, all kinds of things. I'm not sure who from Sweetbriar. He's constantly telling me he's in contact with people from Sweetbriar, feeding him information. Um, but sentences such as, I've meet, I'm meeting with teens to remove the Dean twins um, are very scary. And so why were you afraid to stay at your place? Because of comments like that. It was comments that basically, if I can't have you, no one will. And um, to me, that's very scary. I know he knows you know, where we live. He knows we live on campus. Um, he's visited me one time um, at Sweetbriar just once, but I know he knows you know, where we live. I didn't want to stay there when he was so angry, posting recordings of us, pictures of us without our consent, um, threatening messages, emailing everyone, texting everyone that we knew, um, vulgar, threatening messages. Like this one individual that you just saw, the, the message with them, um, it was between Dr. Matt Keller and himself. He was upset that I was cheating on him with this man named Matt Keller, who is also an identical twin. Um, I don't think it's relevant, but I wasn't. Um, but he sent not only a message to Matt Keller that day, but he went on and sent him another um, message. Let's see what date that was, and I have it. Um, January 13th. This is another message from Scott Gutenberger to Matt Keller. Um, he sends the same or a version of the recordings and videos about us. And then you can see he's threatening Dr. Matt Keller that he's going to ruin his license. So in addition to claiming he's going to ruin our attorney's licenses, he threatens this Dr. Matt Keller that he's going to ruin his doctor's license.
The hacking, if I could say one more thing about it. Um, I remember the night of December 28th, I was, our dad had finally gotten there. He was able to come down finally so we could stop staying in a hotel. And it was me, my twin sister Brianna, and my dad all sitting in the same room at our dining room table. This is after we had blocked his original number from all of our phones so that he would stop with the messages and the calling. And we're all sitting in the same room. And, um, calls one phone after another with this new number, this 303 number. My phone, her phone, his phone, my phone, her phone, his phone. Must have been like an hour. I don't know if he had it on an auto caller or what. You know, bing, bing, bing. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And at, at one point during that hour, Brianna called our boss here, Steve and Nate, to discuss, you know, office matters. And all of a sudden, um, my father is sitting there in the room. He gets a call from Brianna's phone. He shows, he shows us his phone. It says Brianna's calling him. Well, Brianna's on the phone with Stephen Napier. Um, and so we assumed, OK, he's spoofing the phone. But we've, we've talked with the Verizon fraud department. He didn't spoof the phone. The fraud department, Verizon told us, no, no, he, ha he actually hacked into the phone. It wasn't regular spoofing. They did trace it. And then the, uh, two days later, the exact same thing happened, um, but ex in, except it wasn't Brianna's phone calling my dad. Then um, it was my phone calling my dad. So I'm carrying my cell phone, and it's there's no activity on it. And all of a sudden, my dad's phone goes off, and he shows it to me. Brittany Dean, you're calling me. Well, I was holding my phone. I wasn't calling him. Um, anyway, Captain Greiser and Detective Chris Smith, they had us... Um, you know, bring our phones in, and they've started the investigation. Um, they've put our phones in tin cans, the proper storage unit, so it could no longer supposedly be hacked. And then um, our father works for the government, and um, he got a notice from, um, the, well, the computer department uh, at the USPTO, and they had a concern that his government computer, which was, of course, sitting in our same house, um, come down to be with us here this year. But they thought something was going on with his they asked my father and, and the government computer and they're still doing the investigation. And I do have an email from the USPTO. Anything else you want to tell me? Just that um, I do not give consent for my voice, my image, photos, recordings, videos to be posted anywhere. Um, I don't want contact. I have been so respectful. I have not contacted him whatsoever. Um, I told him, Mr. Adolf, you know, this, this is what happens when Mr. Adolf, you know, part ways. They wish each other well, and that's it. Um, he doesn't seem to believe that's true. He, I, his actions show that he thinks that uh, he is owed me. Well, he's not, and I want the contact, the threats, the harassment, and the stalking to stop. That's it. I have not contacted him. I would be happy to continue not to contact him ever, um, and I want the same. Mr. Huber, do you have any questions? Anyway, when you are reporting, can you take it Yes. So, um, Petitioner, can you read that first check? What? What? Right. right. So, 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 so if they were in a storm before an incident, um, they've already committed perjury in the first check mark. I've never been violent towards any of these people. However, these two, and I believe him, has been violent towards me. I have violent recordings on my phone, menacing violent recordings. I'm assuming you're Mr. Dean, right? That's correct. I've never seen this man before. I've left one voicemail, which the police have listened to, and they basically laughed at. Martin's right here, he's seen it, and Captain Reiser has listened to it, and they said there's absolutely no threat here. Mr. Greenberg, the issue is whether he's been threatened, it's whether or not there's been any threat or active violence. So there hasn't. The only active violence that has taken place, other than in my mind, what he has said, uh, would be a grand series, uh, not just the both of us, dead in addition That's to that, in true. June, 
keep you what she thought was a good bottle at me. Your Honor, um, she's already attempted to get restraining orders against both my sister and I and our father in Colorado a few short weeks ago and was denied, so this is not relevant. We were denied. I was denied because I had seen her since October. Yeah. Really, this whole thing starts in October. Understand, uh, but I have several threats. Uh, this has been going on for over a year and a half for me. I have been terrified because of this man. I have been told to keep my mouth shut. The recordings that I have, the whole reason I used to release them earlier, and go to the police earlier, was because she told me that I did something that happened. And my fear is that this man who said he was going to come down and get me would actually come down and get me. You're not just going to the process of reviewing Do you have questions for me? Other than um, this right here being called, we know about Judge filled that out. All right, Judge. So what's your question? Thank you very much. This law? That's not a question. You have a question? Answer a question. Do you have any questions? Then I, uh, not have a question.